that follows in the wake of Gold Prospectors is one that will inevitably touch on stories that are both romantic and tragic. deposits have been worked by the indigenous inhabitants of southern Africa for thousands of years, large-scale commercial exploitation of the mineral only began in the late 19th century. At the time, gold prospectors from all corners of the world flocked to this area to make their fortunes, and small towns and mining camps sprang up virtually overnight, marking the beginning of South Africa's gold mining industry. One such place was Eureka City, now, a ghost town. We set off on a roundabout route that took ages to get there. The town is perched on the mountaintops, safe from the Valley of Death, as the miners called the lowlands, which were plagued by mosquitoes in those early years. We seem to just climb and climb, though stopping on the way to examine this interesting rock formation. The miners' muleys, or mule-drawn wagons, took the shortest route up the mountains, and the deep grooves in the rocks indicate the enormous stress and weight of their heavily loaded wagons. Having reached this point, they had passed what they called the Gate of Hell, and had reached the Gate of Paradise. Not everyone makes it to the top, though. This is strictly 4 by 4 country. After what seemed like a never-ending journey up these mountains, we still hadn't arrived at Eureka City. Here was a deserted mine that dated back to the 1940s. The steel cables strung across the valley were part of a conveyor system to bring ore to this side of the mountain. Another stop. But we were definitely getting closer to that fabled city because this eerie, desolate graveyard is the resting place of those who once lived at Eureka City. Susanna Sherwood's husband, John, was a prospector who later became the town's general dealer and hotelier. Eureka! This is it. Or what's left of it. This is what Eureka City looked like in its heyday. But the gold rush ended almost as quickly as it had started, and the original corrugated iron dwellings were dismantled and taken away. By the 1920s, Eureka City had become a ghost town. Even the stone structures of places like the old Victoria Hotel are being further eroded as time goes by. Reminders of the old diggings have scarred the landscape, with some holes up to 180 meters deep. This was John Sherwood's general dealer store. His home would have adjoined this building. The stonework of the Bank of Africa gives an idea of its compact size and the thickness of the walls of its impressive security. It was in this town that the raunchy barroom entertainer Cockney Liz found fame and fortune. She paraded on the billiard tables and auctioned herself off to the highest bidder. But she cleverly chose a man who would be so drunk that he would simply pass out on her sofa. The only building to survive the ravages of time is the old Sheba School. Give or take a crack or two and some broken windows. The man who made a huge success of his gold claims at Eureka City was Edwin Bray, who started Sheba Mine, which is reputedly one of the richest working gold mines in the world. Bray's early diggings have since closed. Among his claims is this cavernous hollow in the heart of the mountain. Called the Golden Quarry, we entered with some trepidation, 
because there are some unprotected holes that seem to fall all the way to hell. This quarry is a wondrously forbidding place and with some basic safety installations could be a phenomenal tourist attraction. The world's richest gold fields at that time were mined around the town of Barberton from 1884, following Graham Barber's discovery of gold reefs in the area. This set in motion the biggest gold rush in the country's history to that date. The Carp Goldfield Stock Exchange in Barberton, one of the first stock exchanges to operate in South Africa, and now a national monument, is a legacy of those hectic trading days. During its heyday, Barberton had two stock exchanges that traded day and night. It's in the hotels and bars of this town that the legend of the irrepressible Cockney Liz still lives on. Places that have survived the gold boom like the Phoenix Hotel, burnt down and rebuilt in the 30s, and the Globe Tavern were among the regular haunts of Cockney Liz. A glimpse into the lifestyle of the rich and famous of Barberton can be gleaned from their private homes. Bellhaven House, now a museum, is a late Victorian home sent out in kit form from England and assembled on site. Barberton's gold mining era was short-lived as the discoveries around Johannesburg on the Witwatersrand pulled away the majority of diggers. Among the town's other attractions is this unusual garden of remembrance on the site of a military training camp during the Second World War. A memorial of a very different kind is the one to the most famous dog in South Africa, Jock, standing in front of the Barberton Town Hall. He was immortalized in the novel Jock of the Bushveld by Percy Fitzpatrick, who was among the many who did not find fortune on the gold diggings, but became a successful transport rider instead. Jock was the runt of a litter of puppies that Fitzpatrick chose to be his companion on his many adventures through the bushveld.